Mobile apps make a bunch of money. Being able to publish apps on marketplaces like the Google Play Store opens up your creations to hundreds of thousands of potential users. And since Python is one of the most popular and simplest programming languages, I wanted to see if it would be possible to combine the simplicity of Python with the power of mobile apps. Building a mobile app requires a framework and there are a few in Python. I ultimately decided on using Kiwi since it is the most well-documented one and will hopefully cause the least issues. However, Kiwi applications don't look great and it is difficult to get them to look like modern mobile apps. But with some research, I found KiwiMD, a library that implements Google's material design system with Kiwi and which comes with a bunch of pre-made widgets. With all of that out of the way, I sent myself a week to publish an app on the Play Store made with KiwiMD and Python. I first started experimenting with using different widgets available and created a few simple apps to get a feel of how they work. The process of creating applications with Kiwi is pretty simple. You can lay out and install your widgets all in Python, or alternatively, use the recommended KV language and store the layout and styling information in a separate file and just use Python for implementing the app's functionality. The KV language requires widgets to be placed inside other widgets using indentations and styling information to be indented as well. It is much easier to use, especially since you don't have to import the widgets manually, which you would need to in Python. Both the Kiwi and KiwiMD documentations were useful as a beginner. They include examples and screenshots, and since they are both relatively popular, you can easily find help for common issues as well. This was also where a few problems with Kiwi started to pop up. Unlike developing apps with frameworks like Flutter or languages like Kotlin or Swift, you can't test your application on an emulator. So you end up having to do things like resizing the screen to a smaller size to see how it looks on a mobile phone, which really isn't an ideal workflow. And there isn't any hot reloading support out of the box. Hot reloading means that changes are shown immediately once the code is saved, so you don't have to close and rerun the application. There is a way to set up KVMD with hot reloading, but it requires additional maintenance and configurations. But one advantage of KVMD is that it has a surprising amount of widgets included. This includes widgets from tables to dialogues, animation effects, and color themes. I then went through a few app ideas and eventually settled on creating an app with recipes. I made a quick mock-up of it where I wanted to try to load the recipes from this free API and have the app display them, along with a search functionality. When the user taps on a recipe, the details are then loaded. And I also planned on having the app show a random recipe when a button on the homepage is pressed. Moving on to coding it out, I first started with the layout. Here, trying to lay out the widgets was a pain, at least initially. Compared to developing for the web or using other frameworks, Kiwi doesn't have any developer tools you can use to see how much space a widget is taking up. So you sort of need to guess the space and size of widgets to lay them out properly. Since there are so many ways to lay out the widgets, I basically resorted to trying out a bunch of different things just to accomplish something as simple as moving my widgets up to the top of the window. Sometimes setting the size hint worked, other times it was using a different layout. Once I had the top carousel done, I made the recipe widgets reusable so that I could easily change the styling all at the same time. This was pretty easy to do within the .kv file. Creating custom widgets can be done by just declaring them at the top and they can have their own properties as well. With that out of the way, I started creating the category buttons by saving them as images and using an icon button to display them. The last step for the homepage was to add a few popular recipes. And at this point, working with Kiwi and KiwiMD was much faster. I was used to working with all the common layout techniques and could easily duplicate widgets I created to reuse them. As for the random recipe page, it required fetching data from the API. To achieve this, Kiwi provides its own method for requesting data from a URL and I implemented it by first showing the user loading screen when they click the button, loading the data, and showing the random recipe page with the loaded data once it has been received. Moving on, I created the recipe details page and loaded the recipe steps and ingredients from the API. After trying to display the recipe steps like in my original design, I eventually just gave in and displayed it without the numbers, since the API provides the recipe steps in so many different formats which makes it impossible to interpret. With the recipe details done, I started working on the categories page. I wanted the user to be able to select one category and have tabs at the top where they can go through the other categories and have the recipes for them displayed. This was easily accomplished with the help of the pre-made tab widget from KVMD. I initialized the category screen whenever the app loads and simply switched the tab based on what button the user taps on within the homepage. With that, the app was ready to be packaged and be converted into an APK file to run it on a phone and to test it out. The good thing about Kiwi is that you can easily convert the Python script into an APK file. Kiwi recommends using the Buildozer tool, which simplifies everything and allows you to convert it by just running a few commands. 
there was only one problem, and that was that the Bulldozer 2 couldn't even be ran on Linux or Mac OS machines, but not on Windows. Luckily, this was a common issue, and the best workaround is to use Google Colab, which is free and used to run Python on the cloud. Since it is hosted on a Linux machine, it can also be used to build the APK file using Bulldozer. The process of using Bulldozer was pretty seamless from there. You simply need to install a few packages, upload your files, and then your app's name, include the necessary permissions, and you're all set. This was where I ran into a few problems. The converted app was resized into one small corner, the scaling was completely wrong, and none of the images were loaded. I also switched over to testing on appetize.io to be able to upload and test the APKs on the phone right within the browser and have access to the debugging logs. All these problems took a few days to resolve, but by far the toughest one to solve was the images not loading. The images were loaded from the links the API gives and they require HTTPS, but for some reason the SSL certificate couldn't be verified when running it on the phone. I tried everything to get it to work from creating custom widgets to installing different packages and trust me, it took over 35 attempts. If not for this video, I've definitely just moved on, but I'm kind of late on uploading another one, so I had to solve this. And I eventually tried changing the source code for Kiwi to disable the SSL verification, which finally did the trick. With some extra polishing and testing after that, the app was ready to be published. Before that, I quickly generated the app's name, came out with a logo, and designed some screenshots. I then made a Google Play Console developer account, paid $25 to a trillion dollar company, and verified my ID. Uploading to the Google Play Store was pretty simple once that's done. It requires filling in some information, setting the content rating, and entering the app details. Once the app was uploaded, it took a few days for it to be approved, and with that, the app was published. The app works just fine, and although I'm sure there are still bugs, random crashes, and things I wish to improve on, the app made entirely in Python actually works. Would I do it again? Well, probably not. Even though it might be easier to learn initially when compared to something like Swift, Kotlin, or Flutter, you're definitely going to run into a bunch of issues, whether it's packaging the app or customizing the widgets. And many of the problems you run into don't have much resources to solve them, since Kiwi just isn't as popular, so in most cases, you're on your own. There are also many things that Kiwi lacks when plays against other frameworks. Things like hot reloading, emulator support, and third-party packages are incredibly important to develop apps efficiently and which come with other frameworks, but are either non-existent with Kiwi or require some workaround to set up. On the other hand, if you're just looking to try something new or want to create a simple app using a language you're familiar with, then go for it. If there's anything that this video has shown is that you really aren't limited by the tools you have, but rather how persistent you are. I'll leave the link to the app below and considering that you have watched to the end, you'll probably enjoy watching this video next. Besides that, if this video has helped, please consider possibly liking it and subscribing to my channel for more of such content.